1.2, displaying quantitative data with graphs. Uh, thankfully, all of our classes have pretty much become familiar with dot plots. Uh, this is an example of uh, the goal scored for the 2012 U.S. women's soccer team. For this graph, each one of the dots represents a game, and that's how many goals they scored in that game. Looks like, unless the air was covering something up, they only got shut out once. They're a pretty good soccer team. Um, the blank there, this kind of covers the bigger picture. It says the purpose of a graph is to help us understand the data. After you make a graph, always ask, what do I see? So we're in the business uh, as statisticians of making observations of graphs, saying something worthwhile. So what are some notable features about the U.S. women's soccer team graph here? Uh, looks like they crushed some team and had 14 goals one game. So that's me look, is starting to approach what might be an outlier, as well as the game that they had 13 goals. Um, otherwise, the average may be somewhere, the mean may be closer to a little over four because of these two. So the mean may be closer to four, whereas the median, uh, that might be three. And if I had to speak to the shape of this graph, this is not symmetric at all. In fact, this is what we call skewed right. right? This, it would have been symmetric, but then it got pulled way right by these outliers over here. So what are our rules for examining uh, the distribution of a quantitative variable? Remember, that has to do with numbers, where it makes sense to take an average. The first blank, in any graph, look for the overall pattern. Look for the overall pattern. You should be able to observe that by the way it looks. And for striking departures from that pattern. For example, the game where the U.S. women's soccer team had 14 goals. So let's look for the overall trend or overall pattern. And then how about any striking departures from that pattern? And then the second blank there, we need to describe the overall pattern of a distribution by three main characteristics. So those three things we need to speak to are the shape, the shape of the distribution, the center, where is the distribution centered at, and the spread. So loosely speaking, how wide is the distribution? So those three things, shape, center, spread, are three characteristics we need to speak to when we're describing the overall pattern of a distribution. So how do you remember that, shape, center, spread? Um, well, there's a lot of times that we use acronyms in AP Stats. So one thing we say is don't forget your socks, S-O-C-S. So you can probably guess the S, C, and S goes with shape, center, spread. What the heck would O go with? Um, well, I actually said that word earlier. So those striking departures we talked about, those individuals would be considered outliers. So um, if they're not there, we don't have to note them. But otherwise, uh, if there are any outliers, we should mention them when we're describing the overall pattern of the distribution. So we say, don't forget your socks. That's our acronym for describing uh, a dot plot or a distribution like that. Shape, outliers, center, spread. So let's talk about shape for a moment. It says, when you describe a distribution shape, concentrate on the main features. Look for symmetry or basically a lack of symmetry. We call it skewness. So look for those two things when we're talking about the shape of a distribution. Symmetry would be like that nice bell-shaped curve that we see. Um, skewness, that kind of would be the U.S. women's soccer graph above. That one wasn't symmetric at all. So the first blank here says a distribution is blank if the right and left sides of the graph are approximately mirror images of each other. And that's when we're looking for symmetric. Now, in, re in reality, nothing can be perfectly symmetric, right? Um, but it can be really close. So we always say it's roughly or approximately symmetric. So it looks pretty smooth on both sides. They can be almost mirror images of each other. So it can never be perfectly symmetric, so we just usually say roughly symmetric or approximately symmetric. And the next one, we say a distribution is skewed to the right, or you could say right skewed, if the right side of the graph containing the half of the observations with larger values, if you think about the dot plot above, the right side on the number line, that's where the larger values were. If the right side is much longer than the left side, that's what makes it right skewed. And then you can probably guess what this one's going to be. So left skewed or skewed to the left if the left side of the graph is much longer than the right side. And it looks like we've got three examples 
to go with these three instances right here. So the best way to observe the overall trend of these dot plots is to go ahead and, and draw a little curve on top of them. So for the first one, we can trace, now we've got like a little hill, so we start to see that bell shape. And although it's not perfectly symmetric on both sides, right, we said it wouldn't be in reality, we could say this one is symmetric, roughly. So roughly symmetric or approximately symmetric will be fine too. And if we go ahead and draw that same curve shape on this one, right, we just go on top of the dots here trying to figure out the general trend. We see the hill, but then it's like the left foot of the hill is getting pulled out this way. So if it's getting pulled to the left by these values out here, that would be left skewed. And then if you had to classify the last one here, you could probably guess, draw that smooth curve on top of this thing. Uh, it would have been a nice hill, but then it's getting pulled out here, right? I think about the foot of the graph is getting pulled out here, if, if it were to have feet, I suppose. Pulled out to the right, so this one is indeed right skewed. And you're going to have to be able to figure out which one is which uh, when you're asked to describe a distribution. So let's go to the next piece here. It says comparing distributions. Some of the most interesting statistics questions involve comparing two or more groups. Always discuss shape, center spread, and possible outliers whenever you compare distributions of a quantitative variable. And a little star here, it says compare the distributions of household size for these two countries. You have to ignore this screenshot thing that came up on my computer, but you can trust that they're on the same exact x-axis. In fact, why don't I just go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and erase this thing. I think it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There we go. That'll do. So uh, what can we say relative to their shape, center, spread, and are there any outliers present? So let's start with the shape. Um, so the South Africa distribution up here, that definitely looks right skewed, right? If we were to draw a smooth curve on that, oh, it starts to be a bell shape, and then the right foot gets pulled out. So that's clearly right skewed. Whereas the UK distribution, uh, that's looking a lot more symmetric, right? I'm terrible at drawing this curve, but this is looking way more symmetric. It doesn't have those outliers out here like the South Africa distribution. So uh, we can say the distribution for South Africa appears right skewed, whereas the UK data looks roughly symmetric. And notice I put a red underline underneath the word whereas because the key here is for you to use comparative language. Don't just state facts. So if I didn't have that word in there, if I just said distribution for South Africa appears right skewed, the UK data looks roughly symmetric. Well, then I'm just like a robot. I'm just listing facts. So you're, you're getting paid as a statistician, hypothetically, right? Uh, to make these comparisons, we need to use comparative language. So that's why that's, that's key in this case. Okay, so we've compared the shapes. Um, we can go ahead and talk about outliers because I think there are some presence within that South Africa one. So for outliers, the UK doesn't appear to have any outliers. Right? That, that's pretty much a tight grouping for the whole distribution. However, and there's that comparative, langu comparative language, however, red underline, SA, South Africa, abbreviation, looks to have one possible outlier out here. And if we're claiming that this South Africa distribution might have an outlier, we need to say which one we're talking about. So uh, if we could go ahead and just circle it and say it looks like it's about roughly 26. So it looks like it has a possible outlier at roughly 26. And then the other thing about just listing the number 20, like that doesn't give any context. 26 what, right? And you'll get docked for that if you leave that off. If you just give me a number, like I know you're referring to the distribution, but if you don't have any context behind it, go ahead and say what that 26 represents. That's people per house, right? That's what this data was using, household size, number of people. Um, so that's when actually it was at 26 people per house. So important to give context to any numbers you give as well. So if we're going down the list for our SOX acronym, we've got SHAPE done. Outliers are taken care of. We mentioned those. Now let's go to center. So let's compare the centers of these two things. And in general, which one has the higher center? Um, 
Now, measures of center, we could look for the mean or the median, but typically uh, in graphs like these, dot plots, we can go with the median because it's easier to observe which observation is actually the middle one sometimes than it is to observe where the average might be. So in this case, we're going to think of center as being the median, the middle observation. Uh, and in doing that, if I can just go ahead and make a dotted line here, it looks like the median, the middle observation for South Africa is at about six people per house. And what's important to note, that looks like it's definitely higher than the median for the UK distribution. I put a dotted line here as well. So the center of this distribution for South Africa is centered at approximately not just the number six, but the context piece as well. There's six people per house, which is higher than the UK distribution. So it's higher than the center for the UK distribution, which is at about approximately four people per house. Right, and these are just rough observations, so it's okay to, to give uh, approximate values. So approximately four people house for that UK distribution. And again, emphasize on the comparative language here. So one is higher than the other. I didn't just list facts and give you the center for each one. I said which one was higher. Last but not least, Coming from our SOX acronym, we need to talk about the spread. So shape, center, and spread. And we've already done the outliers too. So the spread. Um, one is definitely more spread out than the other one, right? The South Africa one, with this outlier especially, has a, um, a significantly larger spread than the UK distribution. That's actually a pretty tight grouping relative to this distribution. So uh, we can say the South Africa distribution is more variable, right? That's that stats phrasing, stats terminology. It's more variable, aka it has a greater spread than the UK distribution. And since we're AP statisticians, we can actually back that up with a little bit of data from the graph. Not only is it more variable, but let's, let's give some values here as well. So um, we can say South Africa varies from, it looks like, 3, the lowest value, to this outlier up here at 26. So South Africa varies from 3 to 26. So let's give that some context. People per house. But there's the comparative language. The UK only ranges from 2 to 6 people per house. Much tighter grouping for the UK distribution. So we've emphasized comparative language in each one of these instances, shape, center, spread, and the outliers. So that takes us to this Q1 here. What is the most important thing to remember when you're asked to compare two distributions? Well, mine's kind of actually twofold. One, use comparative language. Don't just list facts. The other is make sure that when you do that, you answer in context. Don't just give me numbers by themselves. Give me context of the scenario. For example, 26 people per house, as opposed to just listing the number 26. All right, we're going to stop here. So that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.